All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the CGN suspension. We've got two gentlemen here in the studio to take us through that. We've got uh, on my immediate right, uh, Chukuma Machuku Ume, who is the a senior advocate of Nigeria and former attorney general for Imo State. We also do have Dr. Nasiru Aliu, senior lecturer, Department of Law, uh, Bayerio University, Kano. Uh, thank you for coming on this morning, thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Concerning this suspension, of course, we know a lot of uh, reactions from different quarters uh, about this. But let me start with you, uh, Mr. Dr. Nasir, on, on this particular matter. Uh, what the president relied on uh, to carry out this action, from your perspective, is it in order or not? Well, to me, what the president did is actually in order because uh, this is an order of a competent court, which is a tribunal that has directed him. Actually, I would say even the president has even uh, go beyond because he ought not have even said he is suspended because he is acting based on the order of the court that he should step aside pending the uh, determination of his case. So to me, it's in order because he cannot disobey the court order. That even directed even him though it's that. an ex parte order? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Order is an order, whether an ex parte or, or notice. It doesn't what? matter. Mr. I think the whole thing leaves us with no tomorrow. There's no future. One, the, the president knows very well that the tribunal has no right to try CJN. The tribunal has no right to try a judicial officer. What the, what the tribunal has right to try is public officer. When you look at section 318, the definition, you see what is defined as a judicial Persons in judicial office, judicial office, and then there's also a definition of who are public officers. In none of the sections of the Constitution has the tribunal right to try a judicial officer. Nowhere. And then again, on the ground, what really happened? I can give you the scenario because I was there. Oh. On the 22nd of, of January, the tribunal starts. Four court orders were served on him earlier. And the, the, the counsel to the CGN highlighted these four court orders and asked him, because of these four court orders, from two from Federal High Court, one from FCT High Court, and one from National Industrial Court, you cannot go on. Because the law is, wherever there is a court judgment, whether it is a stupid one or whatever, until it is set aside, you must obey it. What did the chairman do, did? What did he do? He just said, these orders, and to him, doesn't matter. And he's not going to obey them. All four of the orders. Four of the orders, that he's not going to obey them. That's inviting judicial anarchy. These are courts recognized by the Constitution. And meanwhile, the tribunal is an inferior body. Then, there was another fine argument. There was this motion which has expertise and notice. That is say, set as, set, the, the, the decision should be set, should set aside. Then there was the motion saying, we have a motion challenging your jurisdiction. So you cannot go on. Well, that, that, didn't that one particular one happen on the first? The, it all first came from first to okay. the so second of January. Second. Then the, ch the chairman ruled on record that is adjoining the matter to 28th today for him to hear argument on jurisdiction because the law is once your jurisdiction is being challenged you cannot do anything until you rule on that jurisdiction issue either you are joined jurisdiction or not so the matter on record was adjourned from that 22nd to 28th okay for us to That's hear for today for today now now and it is only, the ruling also indicates that it is only after hearing the motion on jurisdiction. If need be, he cannot go into the other. Which are the ruling? If you have the ruling, if the, the court was said, after hearing argument on jurisdiction, whether okay. you are jurisdiction or not, right. after ruling on it, then he cannot go over to the other one. Okay. So, to 28. And on 24, we were before Court of Appeal, who now said, all proceeding in, court of, in the tribunal should stay. The question now is, haven't I joined that matter from 22nd to 28th? Mm -hmm. How could you have come back 
Without hearing the motion on jurisdiction, now assumed and give expected order. Okay. In where to how does so, it portray us? Dr. Lee, yes. what precedents do you rely on? Have you listened to him while he says, look, uh, that is the case as far as he was concerned while he was there. What premise did you rely on to say that the uh, relying on ex parte order was correct? Well, one, the order has been granted. That's a fact that a judge has granted an order. And that is a fact that there is a motion ex parte pending in that court. In fact, on the day when the uh, matter, uh, there was an argument when the, uh, the, the lead counsel for the defense was drawing attention of the court that uh, th this matter, there, is a, there are cases, there are pending orders, then the, when they finished arguing, the, counsel for the, pro the lead counsel for the prosecution now got up and said, my lord, I am asking for an interim order pending determination and hearing of this matter. To my surprise, when my lord came back, he didn't say anything. He just ruled that I have jurisdiction. I can continue to pursue that matter. And then... Were you there as well? Yes. Yes. I was in court. <coughs> but I was not a party. I didn't uh, appear as... Well, but I was just there. But let me say something quickly. Yeah. That the United States know too well that when a jurisdiction of a court is challenged under ACJ, Section 396 is very clear. That, look, forget about what, whatever you want. 396 of ACJ, that's ACTA 2015. Yeah. It mm -hmm. says, whatever you want to do, first, let's appear there are two issues under section 396 mm -hmm. if you are challenging the competency of the charge substantively then you now have to take plea and then the objection will go if it's on the format on the, that substance i mean not substance then what you do is you now go to the dock but don't take plea and then raise the objection that's 166 now you can't just say because that that you are challenging jurisdiction you now circumvent the law and say look proceed and hear my objection despite the fact that the law is very clear yeah, but and, 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 and once I want to say that there is no decision in Nigeria which says that code of conduct tribunal is an inferior court. No, no single decision. Okay, but before you come to that part, let, let me because what uh, the SAN said was um, if the ruling on they the met record. on twenty second, yes, and the ruling was that uh, while the CJN's counsel opposed the application, citing the fact that the court, having acknowledged objection to its jurisdiction, cannot make any interim order. So, how then, because he also did say, uh, the tribunal unanimously rejected that application before adjourning the matter to today. No, I beg to agree that once there is, you have an, an application for an interim order. Yeah. That does not mean that the court no, cannot grant. From what I understand, correct yes. me if I'm wrong, yes. what he says is that, yes, there was uh, uh, an application opposing, jury, challenging jurisdiction, yes. and then interim order. Yes. So when the court then said, look, we're going to adjourn to first of all reconvene and determine jurisdiction before yes. we revisit yes. the question of interim yes. order or not, yes. Yes. which they adjourn to today. Yes. So the, how did they arrive at getting this expert? Did they sit in chambers and decide this matter? I think you are getting it wrong. You see, when you are applying for an interim order, mm -hmm. that's expert. Yeah. The other party need not yeah. to know. Now, if for any reason, look, read that order. It says that Open reading and affidavit of, of the other urgency. party need not Doctor. know. Yes, need not they to will know. not be served. They need not to be served. Is that in a situation, yes. a situation where Ex -party application. where yes. the parties are already before the court, all the parties are already before the court. The issue of ex parte is when there is exigency of time. So is it illegal in this case? It is illegal in this case because one, the issue of issue that the ex parte order have been challenged on issue of jurisdiction, and the court to the to the hearing of everybody. I joined the matter, Sine Dai, on T27, 28 today. How can you adjourn all the matter to 28? And then the issue of jurisdiction was also challenged. The issue of issue that order was also challenged. And then you, you emptied it to 28. Okay, could it, only could to it, come could back. Couldn't we have waited until 28? Only well, to well, come that, back that, before that, any that steps might, is taken. That might not be and the most importantly. Look, let me say something. Most you know, importantly, there's point, something I need to hold, let you hold, know. There's something hold, I want to let on, you know. Let him just respond. Let, to that. let me say something at this point. You know, the fact that you are challenging a jurisdiction of a court, it does not in any way take away the inherent powers of the court. And it does not take in any way your right. To yeah, but, but, but this one, order. in this that's case, it has, it, has, it has led Sorry? to the suspension of the CJS. Sorry? So, what are we going for? Suspension of the CJS. Yes. So, that's not giving. No, no, I think, I think right, we're getting the That's wrong. not giving to me, fair, to me, right to fair to trial, me, is it? No, no. To me, the CJN was asked to step aside that 
even the president, to me, to me, that he cannot say that he is suspending him. Yeah. Because he's acting Dr. under Lee, the court let order. me jump in and rephrase yes. this to you. Because if you say, when it's got to do with an interim order, yes. ex party, yes. that yes. the other party need not be stirred. Yes. But he now says, look, in this particular case, if both of you are before the court on that particular matter, mm -hmm. Does it make sense that the general party will not be served? Will not, does not to be okay, let We me, have even been served. Let me give you a scenario. We have let been me served. Okay. Let me give you a scenario. We have been served and okay. we objected to it. Let me give you a and scenario. Somebody is about to be killed, for example. And then you are before a court of law. And then now there's an uh, uh, issue of jurisdiction challenging the competency of maybe, let's say it's a charge, for example, that now issue of jurisdiction came out even when matters have been had before the judgment. Even after judgment on appeal, you can challenge jurisdiction. Now, simply because the court has started hearing the matter, and then something that has to do, an emergency comes in, we say, no, 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 you can't do that because you, look, there is no law that says that an ex party order cannot be guaranteed, whether interim, whether after or within, that at any time, exigency determines what says, will happen. They've been served in this case. And remember, Sub with motion remember, on notice. remember okay. the motion ex parte notice. motion comes in when it is impossible to serve the other party before the thing they are talking about it's not happens. It's not correct, with all due respect to my... To the party hap happens because for you to serve the other party and give him the 48 hours, to 48 hours notice, the thing you must have aiming at has passed. Now, for public interest, a CJN, look at where we are now. Is this something you can handle with such a levity? Is this something you can cut in by cutting corners? The court adjourned. I'm talking of adjournment. Yeah, we, we know. We'll, we'll 228. And the issue of this, both the expert and this, was before everybody's eyes. And the court is aware of it. And the court adjourned that it cannot do anything on that motion, be it expert or notice, until the issue of judicial is determined on 28. That which is what transpired on the day. On the day of 20, 22nd. Then 28. All of a sudden, what you started hearing is there's order, expected order granted. Mm. So, and, the most, and again, we are even jumping this, this thing. First, look at the provision of the Constitution. Look at Section 153. Look at Part 1 of Sected Shadow. In these places, is there anywhere the Constitution contemplated that a tribunal, a CCT tribunal, can try a sitting judge. Is there anywhere? There are. Is there anywhere? Okay, okay. Where is it? Look.